This next section where they're going to be talking on is transitions. And transitions in idiots, just like the rest of them, are fairly simple to do. But there are some things that you might want to know about it in order to be able to work them more completely. Now, with the video sitting down here on the timeline, like between these two shots right here, it's a very simple thing of putting in a default transition. But let me show you this first. Let's go to Effect, Transitions, and because it has a little X by it, we need to open it up and then go to 2D. You'll notice that we have some basic transitions like blind swipes and blocks and whatnot. But see that D right there? That means that dissolve at this moment is the default transition. And the default time for a transition is set at one second. I want to change that to 15 frames because I really don't want a one second one. So I can right click anywhere in this area where the transitions are, go to duration, transition, and notice it's set at one second. But what I'm going to do is set it at 15 frames and then hit enter. And just like when we were setting time code in the overlay window, it puts in all the leading zeros for it. So I'm going to select OK. And so from now on, when I'm working with these dissolves and these transitions, my default that when I bring it down is going to be 15 frames or a half second instead of one second. Now to place a default transition in between two shots, I can either come up to this button, set default transition, or I can just hit control P. So when I do so, you'll notice now that my transition is right there and that it also put in that cross dissolve because from our settings we said we wanted to do that. Now I'm going to bring my time up a little bit to where we can see a little bit better. And as you see the transition, the default transition is dissolved that goes right in between the two of them. But what if I wanted to change that? What if I wanted to change the duration? What if I wanted to be able to change what the actual transition is doing? Well if I put the mouse over the transition and double click, then you'll be able to see that the dialog box that comes up for my transitions is basically exactly like the dialog box on the rest of the filters and it has the same type of key framer in it. You do have presets. If you want to have presets, you can go into time and progress and be able to sit there and set it if you want it to pause at one place or you want it to act in a different way. And basically a dissolve, that's really all it is. And so you would pick what it is you want to do and then select OK and be able to play. But if I wanted to change the duration on it, I could do that also by right clicking on it and go to duration and then set that for one second if I wanted to. Select OK. And now I have this one second dissolve that it's going to go through. If I wanted to dissolve to be more on one side of the clip than the other, I can actually grab the end of the transition and be able to sit there and use more of that video inside the transition just in case there isn't enough frames from the other video to be able to cover the entire thing. That's just basically kind of doing a default. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and, and delete this transition out. And what I'm going to do this time is let's say that I just don't have enough frames on the second video to be able to extend that video far enough. When I bring the transition down, I can either place it on this side using more of that video in the center, which will do a center cut and have both of them extend out the same amount or place it on the other video if that's where most of my extra frames are going to be. What that basically will do is, is it'll take the frames from the video that has enough frames, but keep the other video with its cut point right where it needs to be, and it won't add any frames to it at all. Meaning that I still get a transition, it's still going to leave the cut point at the exact same point in the timeline. So it's not going to screw up my timeline, it's not going to screw up the duration, or anything of that nature, it's just going to borrow more frames from one clip than from the other clip and basically make it to where I can have smooth transitions without flash frames or jump cuts sitting inside of it because of the fact the added frames were from a different clip. Transitions though can be used in other ways too. When you're going from one video to another, kind of an AB style transition, you can actually go from any video clip to another one. I'll just use this as a prime example right here. Here I have video sitting on one of these pipes coming out of the pump house. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and once again grab our young lady here because she's right there at the top. I'm going to trim her off and what if I just wanted to leave this clip but I wanted to transition down to this one and I already had transitions in here and here. And I really don't want to change the duration of everything. I just want something to be sitting over the top of it and be able to go in very quickly. Well, when you do this, you can take the clip and remember that keyer track where we place the keyers right there? 
Well, what we can do is, is that we can take a regular dissolve and I can place it in that keyer track right there. And what will happen is, is that now I'll have a dissolve going up to that clip and then another dissolve coming down to the original clip. And you can grab these, by the way, on the edge and make them as long or as short as you want to make them. And so you can actually go through and do transitioning from any video track to another video track, as long as there's not something in between it, and be able to do a lot of going back and forth between video tracks without having to worry about just pure single track editing and having to place it in. So it makes it a little bit easier when you're, when you're really wanting to go. I suppose I could have overwritten in here with that shot and then put transition there, transition there, then transition here, and transition there. And, you know, there's a couple of ways of doing it. But if I wanted to do it just very quickly and drop it in very fast, not affecting the audio that's down here, I put it up on the third one and I'm able to use it in that way. Now, 2D transitions is not all you have inside of Edius. You also have 3D transitions, and these ones are pretty standard 3D transitions right here. And you can kind of look through the list that I'm doing here, flip over and flyaways and four page and whatnot. But also if you have a, and I'm not even going to say beefy video card, but a video card that can be used like an NVIDIA card, ATI card that has enough memory on it, you also have what's called GPU effects. Now these GPU effects, they're a little more complicated to work with. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and come back to this title right here because of the fact that I want to show you different ways that a title can come in and out. Now right now it just says Greg the Man. Now, if I want to, I can go up to my 2D and very simply place my dissolve right there on each end. And I would have a dissolve coming through that that would enable me to just dissolve into it and then dissolve out. Now, I've got to be honest with you, this is a little bit of cheating because some of the transitions actually sit there and do the whole video, even though there's an alpha graphic on there and you just want to work there. And dissolve is one of them that does not really see alpha. But because of the fact that it's dissolving the exact same video clip into the exact same video clip, it looks like I just sat there and dissolved in and then dissolved out the title. But that's one of the things that we could do. Also, if you want to replace one, and let's have some fun here and go to Pinball. In my GPU effects, grab that and bring that down on top. And let's just lengthen it out a little bit right here. Then I just drop it on top of the other one. And you can see that a lot of the GPU effects do support alpha. And so you can do some really wild effects. As a matter of fact, if I bring that sphere one in that's called pinball, you can see once again that I'm able to come in and have a lot of control and movement over it. See, I can go into my parameters. I can go into the picture. I can go into transforming it, rotation, scale, anchor, position. Here are all my key frames on that. I can go into the lighting aspects of it, and then I have some other settings that are sitting inside of this. So basically what happens is, is that a lot of these are already preset, such as like the regular sphere. If I want to have a regular sphere, I can put that one on it right there and sit there and, and watch it go and come in. I can then have it go out if I want it to go out. So I just go down to the B's here and I just say, hey, sphere out. You can go in and place these either on the key track if it's above, like a title or something of that nature, or you can go ahead and place them between two shots. So it works either way. And like I said, to get into the duration, if you want to change the duration, you can right click and go into duration. You can also get to the settings that way, but I just usually just hover right over it and double click on it and it brings it right up and then allows me to be able to go in and then change the parameters on the things that I want to change. I know 3D stuff, you know, isn't like all the rage and whatnot, but at the same time, though, it gives you some tools to work with and real-time tools to work with, as you can see right there. And a lot of times you can pull out, like on a video clip above, you could pull out, let's use that title as an example. If I want to just really have that bounce around for a few minutes and almost use this as a filter, I can place it on that key track Oh, that's where I did the sphere. Let's go back to pinball because I like that one better. And as you can see, I can come in and literally have a lot of movement on this and have it go for a very long time and then just sit there for a moment and then go off very, very quickly. So you can really play with these and really make them work. 
And what's nice is, is that finally now in 6.5, what they've done is, is all of the dialog boxes, all of the options, now all look the same. Whereas before this, some of the older transitions had a little bit different box on it. But that's how you work with transitions inside of Edius.